Welcome to Wesley Church's Ash Wednesday service, a reflection as we begin our Lenten journey. As we walk in the footsteps of Jesus this Lent, we will make our way to Jerusalem where Jesus spent his final days. But today, we begin our Lenten journey as we take up the practices of prayer, giving, and fasting, all helping us to draw closer to God. We hope this brief service today will remind all of us of our sinful nature and our need to cast off anything that stands between us and God. May this time help us to reflect on our relationship with God and remember that He is merciful to all who seek forgiveness and earnestly repent of their sins. My friends, let us come humbly before our Lord and worship Him. We implore you in Christ's name and on His behalf, be reconciled to God. The Lord's grace is freely given to us. Don't let it be in vain. Though He was innocent, He suffered for our sake. Let us honor this gift by becoming one with God and one with Christ's faithful disciples everywhere. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we may worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness may obtain of you, the God, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. In our first reading in prophetic language, the prophet called the people to return to God, that is, to repent and offer their sincere and complete allegiance to God. With sincere lamenting and a godly sorrow for their sin, the prophet calls for a fast, an entire change of heart. Listen now to our lesson from Joel 2, verses 1 to 2 and 12 to 17. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like his has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, Return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering, for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priest the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples? Where is their God? In the late 70s, in Sykeston, Barry Wallace, our music minister and a faithful deacon at our church, was writing songs and playing them in groups around town who got together 
to share and worship. One song that he shared with the group was Create in Me a Clean Heart, based on his confession in Psalm 51. In 1983, the song appeared in a Maranatha Praise Song Collection. The author was listed as unknown. After the tragic loss of Keith Green in 1982, an album was released in 1984 titled Jesus Commands Us to Go, which included some previously unreleased recordings. One of the songs on that album is Create in Me a Clean Heart. This was the first released recording of the song and led to its popularity. Of course, everyone assumed that Keith Green wrote it, an idea that makes sense when you look back on the story. So then, without even trying, Barry got a song report recorded by Keith Green. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit. Thank you very much, Deb. What a beautiful song. We hear now the source of that song. We look at Psalm 51. In its origin, it's a plea for forgiveness and renewal. The psalmist acknowledges our grievous sin and pleas for mercy. Furthermore, there's a desire for renewal and the restoration of joy in the sinner's life. Listen now to Psalm 51, verses 1 through 12. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. 
for I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence, and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. It is right that we come to a time that we confess our sins. God calls us to own up to our mistakes, to earnestly repent of our sin, and to seek to live in harmony with each other. Let us be real with God and confess our sin to God and each other. Let us pray. Amen. The Lord takes little pleasure in our earthly offerings, but delights in the sacrifice of our broken spirits. God will never turn away, will never turn away a wounded heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. We want to take a moment now for a time of reflection. I'm going to pause for a moment as music plays and let you just think for a moment on the questions and thoughts that are placed before you. We begin by recognizing that God asks for our whole hearts. That includes our griefs, our sacrifice, our sorrow. Take a deep breath. Visualize yourself. How do you come before God this year on Ash Wednesday? Wherever you are as you watch today, 
take the posture that most represents that inner spirit. Now look, look into the inner room of your heart and ask yourself, what limits do you put on God's love of you? Do doubts, fears, heartbreak cause you to place limits on God's love for you? What limits are you putting on God's love? What is standing between you and the God who knows and loves you? What have you allowed to stand and become a wall between you and God? What has become like a chasm between you and God? There are things in each of our lives that we've left unresolved. Things that we know we need to bring to the Lord. What's standing between you and God today? And how will you use this Lenten season to remove your limitation on God's love? How will you use this Lenten time to move closer to God who made love and cares for you. How are you going to move intentionally closer to God? As we begin our walk with Jesus, retracing his footsteps to the cross, and resurrection. I invite you this Lenten season to take up the spiritual disciplines of the season. Traditionally, we take up things like prayer, giving, and fasting. Here are some practical examples. Could we renew our effort to pray each day together at 410? to be intentional about going before the Lord, praying for one another, praying for this world, praying for peace, praying for those still being impacted every day by this COVID pandemic. How will you be more intentional about prayer? Might you join us at 4.10 each day? Could you increase your giving through this Lenten season? Maybe you're not tithing. It'd be a good season to try it, to give 10% of your income, or to give that little bit extra. Maybe your giving could be in doing something kind for someone. Set a humble goal of at least once a week doing something for someone else. Maybe you might take up the practice of fasting, giving up a particular food item during the season of Lent, laying down your device for a particular time each day, or giving up some other activity and putting that time into talking and spending it with God. What will you do through these practices to draw closer, closer to God this Lenten season? To mark the beginning of your journey this Lent, Let's now take and trace a cross on our forehead and repeat these ancient words. Repent and believe the gospel. Repent 
and believe the gospel. Amen. Deb? Adelaide Pollard penned this classic hymn during a time of personal despair. The message centers on completely forsaking self and submitting to God's will. The poet uses the image of God as the potter and the self as the clay to be molded. May this closing hymn be our prayer of commitment and surrender to God as we begin our Lenten journey. close our time together with this simple prayer. Let us pray. God, you choose to limit yourself for the sake of your people. Let me walk with you this Lent as I face my own limitations and seek to be your presence in the world. Create in me a clean heart that I might know, love, and serve you better through my service to others. Amen.